Alrighty then, people, I'm a little out of practice. It's been a while since I've made a film. I've got two films lined up ready to go, but this is a third one I need to work on because the next four or five months for me are pretty much nonstop on the road, and uh, I've got to get all this done before I leave. So this is as close to a gear review as I'm ever going to do. And the reason I'm doing this is I admittedly have a bag fetish. I am the bag man. I have no less than probably eight, give or take, mas o menos, eight camera bags. And I've made some trusty notes here to describe to you why this is the case, how I use them, why I use them, and why the new one I just got from Tenba is uh, a sweet spot for me that I'm very, very glad I have. Like I said, eight camera bags, some of which I've had for over a decade, and I've been using them basically on a daily basis for over a decade. And then several of the bags I've had for over 30 years, three decades, and I even have the original Donkey F2 that we all had back in the day, Donkey shoulder bags. If you were a press photographer in America, this was a bag that seemingly every single one of us had. I still have my original brown Domkey F2 that has the uh, exploded pen ink stain on the back, which is all me. Looks like a little mini Rorschach test. And uh, yeah, still got it. This is how I use these bags. One holds my audio kit. And I have a variety of different audio kits from little tiny audio recorders like this, but my primary uh, audio kit is heavy duty. And I've been using it for 10 years. And it's got EV mics and tripods and XLR cables. And one of my bags has that audio kit in it full time because I use it pretty much three, four times a week. And it has to be durable and I want it in its own separate bag. So when I look across and see it, I know exactly what's in that bag. And everything in all of my bags goes back in the same place every single time the exact same way. So when I need it in a hurry, I never have to search for it. It drives my wife crazy. She is the polar opposite. Everything goes in a new pocket every time. And then it's like a little mini adventure every day trying to find your stuff. Car keys, wallet, cameras, you name it. That's why it's such a joy being married. Uh, number two is I have a bag that holds my uh, Fuji kit. It's another Tenba bag. I have a lot of Fuji kit. I have three bodies, probably six lenses, drives, all that. I don't rarely would I ever use all of it at the same time. So I have one bag that contains basically all of it, and then I pillage it into smaller bags for when whatever the particular assignment includes. I have another bag that holds my Sony kit. It's actually just a little zippered box that I use to hold the Sony uh, because the Sony rarely leaves my house. I'm using it right now to film. This is primarily what I use it for. I have another bag that holds my Leica kit. That original Donkey F2 bag has all of my Leica gear in there, two bodies, two, two lenses, a little strobe, and a whole bunch of film. I probably have 30 or 40 rolls of film in that bag in case I need it. I can go and work on a project, a sizable project, if and when that need occurs. I also have another bag that holds my medium format kit and my Hasselblad primarily and then also multiple bricks of film as well. So if I need that camera, I just grab that bag and I've got film, I've got my handheld meter, I've got my blot and the two lenses and I'm ready to go. I also have two what I would call expedition bags, which are for those times when movement or hiking distance is really the primary mission and then the camera stuff comes secondary. And those are bags that are really built for like backpacking and distance hiking that also happen to hold camera gear. And now that I think about it, I have a roller uh, camera bag as well. And the roller bag holds uh, stray stuff. It probably has four Polaroid cameras. It has a Nikon F3. Um, it has a Nikon FM 3T. It's got two 50 millimeter Nikon lenses. It's got Voigtlander, two Voigtlander rangefinders with a 12 millimeter and I think a 20 millimeter and underwater housing for those Voigtlanders. So I've got a bunch of miscellaneous stuff as well. That bag hasn't moved in God knows how long. It could be literally stuck to the floor somewhere in this house. I would not be surprised. And then also, I forgot to mention, which I've shown you before in the van, I have a literally just a plastic bin that has the overflow of all the stuff I have that I don't need. I found someone to loan my drone to. He's a pilot here in town who may be interested in long-term loaning. I said I was just going to donate my drone, and he has, a, he has a use for it, and so I thought I'd get rid of my drone. I've got a ton of stuff I don't need and don't use. I throw it in the bin. It rattles around. It gets worn out, and then I question my, my buying decisions and say, why do I have all this stuff? But here's the thing. That was, that was part, part one of our adventure film today on the, on the Tenba bag that I'm a, eventually I will get to. 
I'm, a, I'm alone today, so I'm lonely, and I'm, this is basically like me talking to myself, talking to you, talking to me. So I carry a backpack every single day, and I have for years and years and years. I used to carry a, a satchel, like with a strap over the shoulder, but my back got so bad and so painful. I've had a lot of back issues over the years from bike wrecks and all kinds of things, and also carrying a camera bag. Like, my back at one point in time was like this mostly because I had been carrying that donkey bag on my arm for a decade. And when you, it was actually my left arm. And so my back was kind of like this. And people, people would look at me and say, hey, you look like a human S. That was me. So a backpack substituted for that because obviously it's going to distribute the weight a lot more. But I carry it every single day, no matter where I'm going. If I go to the store, if I go to the bank, if I'm on my bike, I always have a backpack. This is something that kind of drives some of my friends crazy because they're always like, are you really gonna take your backpack? And I'm like, yes, because I use everything that's in the backpack. And we're gonna go over a bunch of the stuff that I have in there on a daily basis and why this bag is sort of the perfect combination for my bizarre bag needs and visions and dreams. Yes, I dream about bags, it happens. I had a dream last night and my sister-in-law was in it, and then a photo critic here in town was in it, and they were interchangeably swapping personalities back and forth. It was bizarre. I woke up and didn't know where I was. So anyway, but I'm here now, and I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing. Let me read my notes here. Yeah, the daily pack is what it's what it's uh, you know what I'm using the most. The bag that I I mentioned in a couple of films ago is a bag that I'm using have been using up until this point. Is a very tiny 15 liter rucksack bag, but it's a bag that was never designed for photography. Consequently, you have to modify it to make it more into a camera bag, which means you have to find some sort of camera insert that fits inside of it, compartmentalize it, put your gear in there, and then see if it works or not. And it works pretty well. It's actually a well-designed pack. The laptop sleeve is great. It's simple, it's small, it's streamlined. There are small things about it that um, are could be better including the size of the pocket for the water bottle. And I'm gonna talk about that on the Tenba because for whatever reason, Tenba does those side pockets really well. They do them better than any bag manufacturer I've seen. And I'll talk about why that's important to me in a minute. So the Tenba bag that we're gonna talk about in a minute, well, I might as well just stop talking about it and show it. It's this one right here, the Tenba Fulton V2 14 liter. Man, does that sound technical. That's about as technical as you are ever going to hear me talk. Tenba Fulton V2 14 liter. That sounds pretty techy. So for those of you who think I'm a Luddite that doesn't understand the internet, you're probably right. But in this case, this is the bag we're going to talk about. Why is this thing so important? Why is it so good? And why, when I saw it on the Tenba site, did I kick myself for not getting it earlier? Because it blends a couple of things that I think you're going to find bizarre but for me have significance. Number one, it is incredibly lightweight when it's empty. Now, you might be saying, Milner, most bags are lightweight when they're empty, but not this lightweight. It's actually incredibly light. That's awesome because you know as a photographer, we're just gonna fill it with junk we don't need, and it's gonna eventually weigh far too more than it should, and you still have to be able to use it. So number one is I love the fact that it's lightweight. Number two, it is designed for photography kit. This is the big difference between this bag and the bag that I am carrying right now, which again was not designed for photography. I had to modify it to be able to carry my daily, daily rig. This thing is designed specifically for it. Now the 14 liter, oddly enough, will hold way more camera equipment than I will ever put in it. So I've got uh, a trip to Albania coming up. I'm teaching two workshops in Albania. This bag obviously will be one of the two bags I take with me on the trip. And on this, for this entire trip, I plan on shooting the entire three weeks with one Fuji X-T4 and a 50 millimeter lens. So in terms of all the still photography, that's what I will use that for. The only other lens I'm contemplating taking because I used this technique in 2019 when I was there before, is I do double exposures, as I've mentioned many times, but I also do long exposure double exposures with using neutral density filters. And so I need a little tripod and I need a, a different lens than the manual focus 50 that I normally use. So I may take like a little 23 F2 weather sealed 35 because also my neutral density filters fit those lenses and they don't fit any of the other lenses I have. So I may throw one of those in there. 
A tripod, I hate tripods. I do, I detest them. I don't like carrying them. They're a major tell when you're walking down the street and so you have a tripod hanging off your bag and everyone's like, there's the photographer. But I need it. I can't, if you're gonna do long exposures, it's really hard to do it any other way. So I'll probably have to do that as well. So this can the 14 liter will hold a body and probably at least four lenses, which is quite a bit. And it's only the bottom half of the bag that takes all of that equipment, which when you see the size of the bag, how small it is, it's kind of incredible that that actually works. Now, again, I don't plan to fill it up. I plan to use one camera, one lens, possibly that second lens for, for long exposure stuff. I'll have my iPhone, I'll have the little selfie slash tripod stick that's revolting that, I, that I'm embarrassed every time I use, I'll have that as well. And I'll have my audio recorder, which is tiny. It's smaller than a cell phone and it works really well. I've also got external mics for this thing that I prefer. All of this, I'll have the, the bottom of this bag, I'll have open space which is fantastic because whenever you're on a trip like this, you always run into things that you end up acquiring in one way or another that you need a little place to stuff that later on. And uh, this is gonna work. So the bottom half of this bag is designed for kit, which is fantastic. And also, by the way, I tested this out on my bicycle. During the sum spring, summer, and fall, I do a lot of commuting on my bicycle here in Santa Fe. Instead of driving the van into town, I can jump on a hike and bike trail and I can be into town. It's less than 10 miles. And uh, I need a pack that I can use while I'm on my bike, and this one actually works. And there's another important wrinkle to that in a minute, which I'll get to. Okay, one body for me, two lenses. Again, it'll fit a lot more. Um, audio kit, laptop, journal. I have two uh, itty bitty hard drives that I take with me. These are two terabyte uh, solid state drives. They're expensive, but they're great. And the bag has little slots in the front, in the front pocket area that these drives fit into easily. And it keeps the bag really thin. And these drives are, are worth it because they're so tiny. And also my iPhone and my passport. Those are the two things, three things that I need access to right up front in the front zippered compartment of the bag. Every bag I've ever had, that front zippered compartment, if you're like me and you have the travel re requirements on you that I do, you, all of these little details about a bag make all the difference in the world. I had a bag once I loved, it didn't have those two little tiny slot pockets in the front that I, my phone and my passport. And I finally just got so frustrated with trying to always find a different place for those two items that I was like, man, I'm either gonna lose these or something worse. And so I ditched the bag and got something else. Number three, it's safe. The only way into that photo camera, uh, depart the photo aspect of the bag, the bottom half, the only way is through the back. So if someone like literally went through my abdomen, yes, they could get to the camera gear. I would assume that I would feel that along the way. Maybe I'd like it, I don't know. But it's a very safe bag. It's not like somebody can walk up from behind and unzip the camera compartment and loot my bag. By the way, that's only happened to me one time. And I was photographing Tool at Lollapalooza in 1993 and somebody tried to steal a lens out of my fanny pack and we got in a little fisticuffs well, I hit him, he didn't hit me. And uh, and then someone from behind hit me in the back of the head. So, uh, But I got away and no one got my lens. So that's the last time it happened and I don't envision it happening again. But if they did, they would get, I don't know, they would get stopped. Number four, this bag holds a full size water bottle. This is critical to me. I live at 7,000 feet in the high desert. I do a lot of running, a lot of cycling and I have kidney stones and I have Lyme disease. So yeah, I might wanna drink a little bit of water from time to time. In fact, I just had my 16 ounces of amino acids after I did my yoga this morning and uh, water bottle is absolutely critical. Uh, and a full size water bottle, no less, is even better. I also have a small uh, thermos that I use for tea. This fits in virtually anybody's side pocket but Tenba's side pockets are bigger and deeper than any I've seen on any other bag line. And that to me, it might seem like a minor detail to you. It is not to me. It is one of the most important things about this bag. Also on the flip side, the pocket on the other side, this is point number five for those of you who are counting. It holds a full-size tripod. Now my full-size tripod uh, was basically built around the time of the pyramids and it weighs about as much as the sarcophagus. It, it weighs about as much as an Egyptian pyramid. I would never dream of carrying this on the road. The uh, only time I use this tripod is in the van. But luckily, someone just gifted me one of the biggest piece of junk tripods I've ever seen. 
and it fits perfectly in this pocket, and it's probably the one that I'm gonna start taking with me when I do trips like Albania, where I have to have a tripod. It is borderline usable, but it's very, very light and small. And if I use it at the end of that trip and I go, I detest this tripod, I can gift it to somebody in Albania and I don't have to carry it back. The point is that side pocket on the Tenba is incredibly tall and deep. And they're also, the, both side pockets are made out of different material. The water bottle material is that mesh stretchy stuff. And the other pocket on the other side is made out of a much more substantial material that is strong enough to hold a tripod. And then there's two top straps at the top where you can cinch down the tripod. Again, I have nightmares of carrying a tripod and like walking along and it gets stuck on something and then it pulls me into the path of a light rail. That's the kind of dreams I have. Action adventure where it doesn't end well. Okay, here's the really fun part of this bag for me. So in 1995, I was going to Guatemala and I was gonna go down there for about a month. I had two stories I was trying to do and I was gonna to go to Escuela de Lengua. I was gonna to go to language school in Guatemala for a month and then shoot these stories on the side. And I was really unprepared. I, I had a Leica with a lens, I had a M4P and a 28. I had two Canons with zooms. These my newspaper journalism rig, if you wanna call it something. And uh, I didn't have any bags. All I had was like a duffel bag. And I was like, I need a backpack. And in Austin, there's an REI outlet and they had a discount bin and there was one pack in this bin and it was five bucks. And it was a basic off-brand top loader backpack, as basic as you can get. No waist belt, just shoulder straps. It was the length of my back. So it was a sizable, sizable bag because my back is huge as you can see. Top loader, I thought I would use this bag in Guatemala for a month and I would get rid of it. And 15 years later, I was in the backyard of my house in Southern California trying to hose some sort of foreign sub substance off of this pack that I had got, that I picked up when I checked the bag at an airline and they put, they got something on it that was inhumane and it was like toxic waste and the bag just disintegrated in front of me. But for $5 over 15 years, and the thing is, a top loader bag for a photographer, for the most part, like a top loader backpack is not a usable bag because anything on the bottom, you have to take everything out of the top to get to it. But for whatever reason, I fell in love with this bag. And I would travel through Guatemala for like weeks at a time in the middle of nowhere with just this bag. And there were times where I had my Leica, both Canons, both zoom lenses, all my food and all my camping and clothing and stuff stuffed into this bag. I loved it. And so when I looked at the Tenba bag, the new one, and it had a top loader section, that was it for me. It was like a love affair. It was like Tenba was there with me in Guatemala secretly in 1995. And like, I don't even know if Tenba existed. Oh, it did. Tenba was, is from 1977. So maybe somebody from Tenba was in Guatemala with me. I don't know. But all I know is when I saw the top load feature, I was like, oh man, this is built for me. So living where I do and doing what I do, there are two things outside of what you might think would be hypercritical for me in a bag. Number one are layers. So even, even in the summer here, if you're in July or August and it's 95 degrees during the day, you're at 7,000 feet. So it's still, if you jump in a swimming pool at 7,000 feet and it's 90 degrees outside and you get out, it's freezing because it's so dry and you're at high elevation. So layers are something I constantly have with me. I'm super flacco, man. I'm skinny. I don't have much body fat. I get cold really fast. So I'm always looking for a place to keep layers. The top load section is perfect. The second thing is food, calories, energy. That to me is equally as important. I'm constantly carrying little bits of food here and there. And when I travel, it's even more important because I eat a relatively strict diet and I don't eat junk food. And so I have to have certain kinds of calories while I'm out in the field. And having a quick access top loader aspect of this bag is really important to me. And it is a throwback more than anything else to those times, those 15 year period where I was using a top loader backpack to travel the world for whatever reason, I fell in love with it and there it was. So I think the design, this is multiple bags in one. It's a bag with a split personality. The top loader section is like backpacker doing the hippie trail to Kathmandu. And the bottom is like, I'm gonna go do a fashion shoot in New York because I'm a big wig and that's what big wigs do, is they shoot fashion in New York. And if you don't know that, wake up, man. That's where the, the cool people are in fashion. 
If you don't know that yet, then you're in for a treat because real fashion photographers are cooler than you and I, and there's nothing we can do about it. It's like what Stephen King says about writing. You are born at a certain level and you ain't changing your place on the scale ever, no matter what you do, you're stuck. Get used to it. Okay, last part of this bag that I love. It's a black camouflage color scheme. There, are there other colors available? I'm sure. Are they of any interest to me? No, because it's camouflage. What else do I have to say? I have a Ducks Unlimited camouflage shirt that I had in middle school that I still have and wear. I love camouflage. And it, this is not an over the top, hardcore, look at it across the airport and see camouflage. It's very subtle, it's shades of gray. Black, charcoal, and dark gray. So it's a very subtle, black camo, but the other rub on the black camo is that it's much more weather resistant. This version of the bag is more weather resistant than the other two. Again, that is critical for me. I live in a place where we have a monsoon season during the summer. I'm about to spend uh, the summer on the East Coast where rain is a very definite possibility. I'm going to be taking the train into New York and Boston and DC with my folding bike. My Brompton is going to uh, get me around those cities when I'm there. And I'm going to have this pack on my back and I guarantee you I'm going to get stuck in the rain. It is not fully weatherproof. I do have a need for a fully waterproof backpack, which I have already picked out from a different brand. But that is very specific for the work that I do when I'm from the canoe and when I'm on the water in boats. And that's kind of hard to get around when you need something that's fully waterproof. This Tenba bag is not fully waterproof, but it's very weather resistant and that's enough. So if I'm hiking in Albania in the Albanian Alps and we get caught in a, in a thunderstorm late in the day, not only is the bag uh, weather resistant, but it also has a, a cover that comes with it as well. So if weather is critical to you as well. That's the version, the black camo version of the bag is the one you want because it's a little bit more weather resistant than the other two and it comes with a cover, which is, um, which again is nice because I'm telling you, getting soaked at high elevation is no joke. Every summer, every summer, I leave the parking lot trailhead at Santa Fe Ski Basin, 10,000 feet, and I hike Santa Fe Baldy, which is 12.6. And it takes, I don't know, it's probably 14 mile round trip hike um, it's not difficult. The last 500 feet is pretty steep. But inevitably, when I, I get up there early, I leave the leave the trailhead before sunrise and I, I get to the top. I'm Oftentimes, I'm the only one up there. And then I get myself back down because in the summer, you definitely do not want to be on that mountain afternoon because of the thunderstorms and the monsoons and the lightning storms and the hail. Um, inevitably, as I'm approaching the parking lot, let's say at, I don't know, 9.30 in the morning, there tends to be a whole range of tourists heading up the mountain with no water and no rain gear. These are the folks that have to get rescued later in the day. And so you don't want to be in that category of hiker. You want, And you don't necessarily need to be in my category of hiker, but you want to be in the prepared category of hiker. And that means water and rain gear, because rain at 7,000, 9,000, 10,000 feet is ice cold and you'll be hypothermic in seconds. So I'm happy. I'm stoked to get this bag. I am very happy. I cannot wait to put it into action more uh, as I get out over the summer. Now, the last point I'm going to make, for those of you who are patrons of mine on my Patreon page, uh, this might be your lucky day because one of you is going to win this hermetically sealed 10 liter version of the same bag. Yes, this could be yours. So I am going to randomly choose one of those folks who's one of my Patreons and I'm gonna uh, send this bag to you. I think you will like it. And for most people, the 10 liter, which will still hold a camera body, probably two or three lenses, that is plenty for a, a daily carry bag. So I think you're actually gonna be quite happy with the 10 and if you, Love it enough, you can always get the 14 or the 16. The bag comes in three sizes. The 14 to me is the sweet spot, but again, I just explained why. And the 10, I think for a lot of people is gonna be the perfect, uh, perfect solution. So that is my take on the Tenba bag. Again, I have a bag fetish and I'll be right up front about it. But I think I, do, I think I explained sort of the rhyme and reason behind why I use the bags I do and how I use them. And I think at my life as a creative, I guess you could call it that, I don't call myself a photographer anymore because I don't work, I don't make my living with photography, but it's a weird one because I'm producing such an odd style of work for different people, for different reasons, and my needs are bizarre. I have bizarre bag needs. 
Thank you to Tenba. Thank you to uh, everybody for watching this film. And uh, I've got a bunch more films coming up, more photo related stuff, and also some biking stuff, cycling stuff, and some adventure. And uh, I'm glad you're here and I'll be back. <laughs>